Uh, well, first of all, it's really great to be uh, back here at Harrodon High School, uh, the finest school in the nation, go Rams. Um, yeah. Um, I, I, I was really a, a, an interesting student here. Um, you could speak to some teachers like uh, Ms. Scherpier and Ms. Galvin about my skills in uh, physics and math which uh, respectively were, let's say, great, uh, if I was being extremely sarcastic, um, or, or Mr. Rappaport about how uh, I spoke a lot whenever I wasn't supposed to be speaking, uh, or maybe Mr. O'Brien about uh, my IB, IB exam score, uh, scores, which made the top 90% uh, possible. So um, I really come here today with um, uh, very uh, little academic achievement, uh, but want to speak about how I, I learn. Um, you learn a lot in school, it's foundational, it's very, very important to your future. Um, as the other speakers have pointed out, uh, going to class there is simply no substitute for it. But I would argue that by just doing that, you're leaving a chunk of your potential on the table. That if you do simply only what is prescribed to you, you miss out on what is potentially optimized for you. And I think there's an opportunity to bridge the gap between the generalized education that you receive and the optimal person you want to be. So I've come up with a catchy phrase to, so that maybe you remember something from my talk today, and this is it. Stop learning, start building. What does that actually mean? So building your education, I put up a nice definition there, but basically it's an inventive, creative, critical, um, way to position yourself differently, to think really uniquely about who you are and what you can learn that's different from everybody else, and how you can use your time effectively in order to do that. Um, it's about building your unique competitive advantage. Um, what really makes you who you are to your future employers or maybe investors or just other people. And I want to argue, and I'll explain this in a minute, that you should build your knowledge base like you build a business. So I've kind of highlighted the, uh, outlined the education ecosystem as it is today. I think there are kind of the conventional options, uh, universities, school, uh, maybe even some online courses. These wide, uh, widely adopted, uh, mass adopted options that kind of take you along a path, that have clear outcomes and um, clear results, but are also proven methods. There are some of these new uh, methods, coding academies, uh, international learning. These are um, marketed methods. They uh, support um, the gap between the degree you're receiving from a traditional institution and some of the skills you need to learn. Um, there are entrepreneurs out there starting new for-profit businesses that teach things every day. Um, I'm actually the co-founder of a non-profit business called TavTech that uh, does something similar to this. But then there are these designer methods that I want to speak about today. And this is when you play the entrepreneur, when you decide what you want to learn, and when you create the opportunity and think really critically about how to use your spare time. So a few examples of this. Um, this is a picture of um, Moscow, Russia. It's, the reason I, 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 I put it up there is because my friend, who uh, is really into film, decided that instead of taking a Russian uh, film class, a Russian cinema class, he was going to actually spend the two weeks he had after college before he started his internship going to Russia and interviewing any filmmaker, any movie producer who would speak to him. And he says this was one of the most pivotal things he's ever done. Um, at the time, interestingly enough, the Russian ruble was so weak that he got a flight for like $300 round trip to Russia, which was really incredible. And so he learned something that he could um, otherwise pay $5,000 in college tuition for and kind of not take a lot away from by actually going to the location and creating his own opportunity. Another example is a friend that I have who just graduated um, with a finance degree and wanted to really learn something. So he started with uh, a group of his friends and he said, hey guys, let's learn how to code and let's do it together and let's spend the next three weeks that we all have free doing this and maybe have some fun in the meantime. Um, I don't want to crush all fun as it exists. Um, and yet another example I've heard of is a student who believed that uh, community building is really important and that you can learn a lot from building a great community. But he also wanted to hike Mount Everest. 
So he took five of his friends who are interested in building businesses and entrepreneurship and said, hey, let's go up to Mount Everest. Let's spend a week, uh, excuse me, Mount Kilimanjaro, that's not Everest, and spend a week doing this and learn a lot from each other in the process through our conversations and see one of the most magnificent things in the world. So some strategies that I, that I recommend for this kind of thing um, that I've seen kind of work. Exceptional, can I learn something that no one else is learning or that few people around me are learning? Cross-disciplinary, can I meld two subjects together? And this is really kind of desired by employers and positions you well for, for certain opportunities today. Can I take two subjects I'm really interested in and passionate about, put them together and make something larger than the sum of its parts? Or betting on the future, do I think something is going to be really big one day and maybe I should spend my time uh, focused learning on it right now? Um, and from any opportunity, I think you can find wins, from renting an apartment uh, to, uh, to anything you do on a daily basis, you can try to learn from if you think about it, if you spend some time, um, some time uh, thinking about it. So that brings me to this point. So the, Google, other tech companies, uh, we hear about them every day, um, often implement this concept of 20% time, whereas you spend 20% of any given work week um, working on something that's not directly related to the uh, objectives and key results of your role. And my question is, why not apply this to our education? Why not be the entrepreneurs uh, at least 20% of the time, thinking really critically about where our gaps are between where we want to be and what we're currently learning? Um, in college, I'd actually, uh, sp now that I graduated, I can say this, I, I would spend every other week totally not focusing on classes and just thinking about um, all the other initiatives I was taking on, um, some things I was doing at the time. Um, I, was, uh, I started a couple of startups. I uh, built a couple of nonprofit organizations. I spent time researching in India. And I, I really felt, felt that it was important to spend time either week over week or during my breaks doing something that was going to teach me something outside of the classroom. So we all face these barriers. Um, and sometimes they're actually useful, but I'll go through some of them. Um, I can't learn how to code. I can't learn how to become a movie producer. I don't have time. Um, and time is a premium, so uh, I, I, sometimes that one makes sense. Um, my college doesn't offer this class. Um, the professor sucks. Uh, I'm not on the pre-med track. Uh, I'm more of a, insert the word here, person. Uh, these are all excuses we use to keep us focused, to keep us focused on what we are doing day to day. But sometimes it makes sense to break that focus. Sometimes it makes sense to think critically about what you, uh, what you want to achieve outside of your uh, designated path. And some good signs that you're perhaps breaking that focus is being uncomfortable, being different, and feeling uh, a lot of FOMO. Uh, you guys probably know what that is. So this uh, is the best picture, I royalty-free picture I could find uh, of the 2008 financial crisis. And um, the reason why I wanted to discuss this today is because I think that our agility and how quickly we can reposition ourselves and learn new skills is directly related to some broader economic issues. Just this morning, um, I was being told that uh, a new jobs report came out. And uh, the US, uh, many years after uh, the recession of 2008, still has lackluster job growth. Still, uh, people who lost their jobs in 2008, millions of them, some of them still have not been able to rejoin the workforce. And some of this is due to the fact that once you leave the workforce, you lose some of the relevancy in your skills, in your knowledge base, and it just becomes even harder to re-enter. So as a society, we need to be more entrepreneurial in our learning. It could bring us a lot of economic gains. It could um, offer us uh, a means of security when things aren't as good. And this picture is also royalty free, uh, a, a nice marketplace. I don't know where in the world, but I wanted to point out that um, there are many, inf an infinite amount of available options out there. And you really have to go and seek out these options. But I want to ask the question, what if our universities were more like marketplaces? What if our universities, um, instead of this kind of vertically integrated model where you have 
the professors who teach the classes all under one roof embrace some of these entrepreneurial ideas coming in? What if they um, permitted some, you to use your credits to, take a, to go to a coding academy or to create your own experience? And some have gone in this way, but really thinking critically about each and every credit hour that you're paying for. Unfortunately, new models take time. Our system's not going to change overnight, and that applies to big institutions, to, um, to just the way our culture works. But luckily, changing your perspective doesn't, and you can change that today. Thank you.